Germans are interested. Friends of mine, some friends of mine are interested in Italian citizenship. Oh no. Informationsecke. <lacht> Was ist das? Mikrofon? Yes. Okay. Also Mikroformat und Mikrofon. Das passt ich bin voll im Livestream. Dann. Oh Mann. Das ist der Mikroformat Corner, right? Ja. Yeah. Okay. So Aaron needs a laptop, so he can wear a mic. He wasn't sure if you were coming to this yeah, or well, not. So. Well, Aaron joined this as well. Yeah. Okay. But he is for a little indie web. Anyone else want coffee? Thank you. I will just start, start yeah, talking yeah. and then get another one. Okay. We have we have lots of coffee, so that's like. Was it your place? Well, I don't have to sit there. I also don't have a computer. Do you want to borrow this one? I would love to borrow that one. are sort of the uh, basics of um, how all of these new websites communicate. And um, the principle, underlying principle of microformats is to take your existing website, HTML, and then add structure to it to turn it into an API, basically. 
So if you look at um, if you if you imagine you're writing HTML and we can all imagine HTML tags on the page, you're going to have um, you have something on the page you're describing. Uh, so in my case, I have um, a, a photo, uh, a check, which has a couple of properties like the time that I posted it, uh, the location it's posted from, there's an image, there's some text, um, and here's a blog post with the title, and I want to turn, I want to make this machine readable. So, of course, one way you do it is I could like set up a totally different file somewhere that describes it, like uh, how RSS and Atom are a totally different separate file that you generate separately that's machine readable. The idea with microformats is to take what's already here and in place make it machine readable. So if you look, what I've done is um, let's move this. Oh, man, I, I mostly use Chrome, so this is difficult. <laughs> it's okay, I think I can figure it out. Um, so here we have the blog post name, and my normal, my normal HTML authoring, I, I put an H2 there, and, um, and then down here I have the, um, the link to the post, and here's the text of the post, right? So the idea is to take what I've already got on the page, add structure to it. So here you'll notice um, p-name. So everything in microformats is done in a class attribute. And uh, all of the microformats uh, class names are a, a letter uh, or dt for dates with a hyphen and then the name of the property. So, uh, and then that's how to get properties and then they are all enclosed in uh, a sort of top level object. In this case, this is a blog post and uh, so it has like a publish date. So you use H entry. So I first I start with find the blog post, uh, the, the, the HTML element that contains the blog post, add class equals H entry. So that's up here. Um, and that tells the parser, OK, here is one thing. Inside that, we're going to start picking out the little pieces inside. Here's the name of the post. So we'll give it a class p-name. Um, the, the letter is basically an instruction to the parser to tell it how to find the value. So there's a couple of different uh, prefixes. We have P and E. And uh, down here is uh, inside here is DT. And here's a U. Those are the four. Um, so basically, is H one of them? H is only for the containing element. So that's that's how it, that's how it tells you that's how it tells the parser that this is an object. So H dash entry means this is an entry object, and then everything inside of it will start getting added into the properties of that. Um, P tells it where to get the value from. Uh, the values from the uh, text inside the tag. So. I have p-name, the value of the name property will be this text. Um, e tells it to get the value from inside the tag, but treat it as HTML. So any HTML tags inside this will be in the final result. Whereas with the p property, it'll be turned into plain text. And then um, u means get the value from the href attribute. So, and that makes sense for, for links, where you want the value to be at the link. Notice that like the, the hyperlinks, the text, the text value of the tag is usually some actual text describing the, the link. So in this case, you want the URL to be the, the value to be the URL. So this U tells it to get the value from the href attribute. Uh, and then for date objects, there's a special one because um, you need to tell it to get it from the date time attribute. So basically, um, so that's that's like the, the the parsing rules. You don't really need to memorize that, but it's sort of good to know. Basically, you'll end up doing the same thing over and over again. You'll use 
uh, e content for the blog post. Um, you'll use p dash category for tags. You'll use dt publish for the date time, and there won't be a lot of variation. But it can be useful to know the the rules for those prefixes because you can, uh, depending on your markup, you can use different um, class names so that you don't have to change your markup. So that that's one of the that's one of the other uh, fundamental pieces of microformats is that it tries to not be intrusive in your HTML. So it's not telling you, you must write HTML this way. It's, it says, no, like you are writing HTML. Let's make you change as little as possible to make it machine readable. So it technically doesn't matter at all on what kind of HTML tag I put those? The HTML tag doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter. The only, it, the only way it kind of matters is that you can't have an href attribute on uh, div. Right. But, but, but that's an HTML thing. Yeah. thing. But it, I think the parser would still find it because it doesn't really care about the HTML thing. And it would even work with custom tags or something like uh, Yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah, the, the parser doesn't care about the tag name. It just cares about the, uh, the class name. And then the class name tells it where the value is. Is that a web standard thing? Or microformats? Yeah, yeah it's um, microformats.org. It's, uh, it's a community standard. Okay, um, okay been around for a long time, actually. Um, and Microformats 2 is this is the sort of uh, is a version I've been describing with the, the prefixes, and um, it, that that's when it became. Uh, it doesn't care about vocabulary, and that's that was a, a relaunch of it probably over five years ago now. Um, and so you'll also hear about Microformats 1 if you start looking into like SEO stuff because. Quite a, back in the day, Google um, made a big deal about promoting microformats to show up in search results. So if you are trying to get your recipes or reviews to show up in search results, you can use microformats one to tell it, like, here's the rating, here's the recipe uh, time it takes to cook, and that kind of thing. Um, and then Google indexes those properties to show um, in the search results. Um, but it doesn't work with version two? Not officially, and we don't really think so, but it's possible. They don't usually document publicly what they use for search indexing, except for very specific cases, because mm -hmm. as soon as they do, people try to game it. Um, but it turns out we don't need, like, that's not a reason that we need it, right? We're using it because we want to make the page machine readable for each other. So the end result of this is. Um, so uh, here's, here's the blog post, and what I can do is I can run it through a microformats parser. Um, this is a, so you'll, you'll find microformats parsers in, there's libraries in many different languages. Um, the most robust ones are PHP, Ruby, and Node.js. Those are well-written libraries with tests, and they cover most of the spec. Um, there's a few experimental ones in some other languages that cover the basics of the spec and maybe fail on the edge cases. But if you're writing code in PHP, Ruby, or Node, uh, there is a solid microformats parser that you can rely on. Uh, this page is a uh, demo page that I set up to quickly test the PHP parser. Um, so you can paste the URL into here and then have it parse it. And now this is what happens when you look at the parse result. And this is why it's really interesting. Um, Whenever I'm parsing somebody else's blog post to either find their photo or find the blog post name or um, find the comment text, I don't have to think about HTML. And that's why I like microformats, because I don't want to have to parse HTML. HTML can be messy. Um, you have to worry about tag names and uh, what happens if you are improperly nested things, whatever. Like, I don't want to think about it. And that's why I like microformats, because I basically get to treat everybody's web page as a JSON structure. So uh, this is what my page looks like when viewed by a microformats parser. Uh, so you'll always have this top, top level items, which is everything it found on the page. And then each item is an, is this, is an object. And I said, uh, I mentioned you use h dash entry uh, to say this is a blog post. So that H entry object shows up as one of these items. Um, so we can start finding the, the stuff that I marked up in here. Here's the name. And now, look, there's no HTML tags. It's just the text value of the name. Here's all the categories. Here's the URL that I found. 
Um, there's the publish date. And then here's the content. And remember how that was e-content? So it has both a text version and it also includes an HTML page. And this is every, all the HTML that's in that, in that post does show up in this one. So, so that you can use it for blog posts with formatting. Um, and so then I also have, at the bottom of my page, I have this little footer block of, about me, my bio is, is there, my photo. So that's, uh, and that's an H card. So H card is, a, is to describe people or things, uh, like places or people, but not blog posts. So I use H card and that has uh, a different set of properties that you would expect to find in it. So that H card shows up uh, here after the H entry. So then it's got, uh, here's, here's the new web camp, which is what that chunk is. There's OAuth.net. So that's like a nested H card within the H card. Uh, yes, exactly. So um, inside my inside my bio, I have which is an H card. So this whole thing's an H card. I also have uh, this chunk, which is an H card. Oh yeah. So I should mention this uh, nesting nesting objects. Um, so H card describes people. People have uh, are associated with organizations. So there's a there's a property called or org for organization um, on H cards, and the value of the org can be an H card because an organization can also be described with an H card. So it's essentially nesting H cards under H cards, and it works with any any sort of. Uh, nesting types of objects. And that's what you're you'll see this pattern where you'll have p dash something space h dash something. And that's the, doing the nesting structure. The way that looks in the end is here's the h card. One of the properties is org and the value is another h card. So, um, and I have that up here again with, uh, with location. So the location of, that I wrote that blog post in is actually an H address. And that's so that I can put the name of the city and the latitude and longitude. Um, and that's, so that's, that's nested, that's uh, this, this line. So that is the P location dash H address. Um, so that makes sense so far? Is there any reference from the H entry to the H card? Ah, good question. So this is a little tricky. Um, and this starts getting into consuming microformats instead of just the parsing. So I've been talking mostly about just the parsing aspect. Um, if you want to do something like show the picture of somebody who liked a post, um, now uh, you run you run that. So, so here's here's Ryan's uh, like post. He says likes this thing by, by Aaron. So I, I don't look at this page, I run it through the Micromats parser, and the parser says, um, so here's, uh, it's an H entry, here's the author of the post, and here, his name is Ryan, and here's his photo. Uh, and it's a like of my post. So when I get that web engine and I wanna look at this page and say, all right, what does this page mean? I look for a couple of properties. I look for things like like of, and then I try to find the author and find a photo and show the photo. So that's where you start getting in, into consuming microformats. And that's where it starts to get a little tricky just because there's so many variations, right? Um, Ryan happens to have an author property inside the H entry, which is a nested H card. So it's very easy to find his photo for this blog post. But if you look at mine, Here's my H entry, uh, and then we'll scroll down to the author property, and notice that the author is not an H card, it's just a URL. So if you receive a web engine from me and you're trying to find my photo, it's not there. So where is it, right? Um, so this is, this is all described, this is what's called the authorship algorithm. Um, it describes basically a series of steps you do to find the author proposed. I happen, this case happens to be the last step 
in the list. So I always throw off people's websites, but it's fine. Um, so how do you do it? You notice that the author is a URL. Well, um, let's first look for other H cards in this page with that URL. So here's an H card. Uh, that's not the URL property, but here's the URL property, and there's that URL. So now I can say, oh, I have that H card. It's right here because the URL matches. Now, where's the photo of this H card? It turns out that is just right here. So that, that's how you find the author photo when it's not nested inside the H entry. So one extra step. Now, it could be worse because this H card may not have been on the page. And in that case, then you have to go fetch the URL and then find the H card on the home page. And that's sort of uh, the slightly more complicated version because it does require an extra HTTP request. Um, but it's not so bad. And um, it's, it's a well-described algorithm. There's a series of steps you can follow. And you'll find everybody's H card. Um, because I, I end up doing this a lot in a lot of different projects, I wanted to turn that into a library that I can use over and over again. So I, I did that, and it's also I also use it as an API for some things. Um, and that, that is called X-Ray. And this, so this is, uh, this is a library that, that anybody can download. It's, it's written in PHP. If you're using a PHP project, feel free to use it. It's also an API you can launch. Uh, in case you want to consume it from something that's not PHP, which is what I do in a couple of cases. Um, now what this is doing, it first parses the microformats, and then it, so it uses, it, it's using, um, it starts with this data structure where it's got all these microformats, which has the author is down at the bottom of the, in the second H card, and it basically follows all of these algorithms to normalize it into a very simple structure. So, microformats, the parsing does not care about vocabulary. What I, mean, what I mean by that is, if you have h dash entry, people who see that will expect to find certain things, but the parser doesn't care. So you can literally make up any property you want inside h entry, and it'll work. And I can demo that. Um, so, h entry, and then we can just say in here. Uh, whatever, and that's not that's nothing, right? But if I but if I parse it, it still shows up in the parse result because the parser doesn't care, right? So fine. So with that in mind, um, and that, that's actually the power of microformats because it basically lets the vocabularies and the use of it evolve over time without changing the parsers. So that's good. What I did with X-Ray was that I actually, when I'm consuming this, I actually want things to look the same and to have only one representation. I, and I, I want it to be aware of vocabulary. So this, um, this is the X-Ray parsed result of a page, which looks much simpler. And uh, so it has a published date, it has the URL, it found the author and it put it here. So at any time I look at someone's blog post through X-Ray, it's always gonna have the author photo here if X-Ray found it. And X-Ray does the step of matching H cards, fetching the extra request. Um, X-Ray also, for the, any HTML that's in here, it also uh, strips extra um, element, elements like script tags it'll remove. It'll remove extra class tags that aren't useful. This is like a super cleaned up version of the HTML, whereas the parser doesn't do any of that. The parser just passes it through. Um, so this is how I mostly now interact with the microformats um, on people's websites, is this is a super cleaned up version. The downside is that this is vocabulary aware. So if somebody adds a new property, like, um, like, like the bookmark property, this won't return it because it's not in its whitelist. Um, so it's, I, I drew that line intentionally. Like I, I don't want this to return arbitrary data because when I'm consuming data, I want it to always be consistent. But the parser uh, doesn't have that restriction, if that makes sense. Um, I, can, I can change x-ray. I, I add new things to it all the time. 
but I just I do that and then I document it in the X-ray documentation and I release it as a new version and that kind of thing. Uh, whereas the the parsers should be as simple as possible so that we don't have to release new versions all the time. Right. Um, but yeah, I I I wanted to illustrate the difference between parsing the HTML into microformats and then consuming the microformats. That's the, the distinction there. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. You don't want to dig around in arrays and so try to find the right end frames. So. Yeah, yeah. I I much prefer dealing with the cleaned up cleaned up version. And I know extra will sanitize HTML. Um, let's see, what else? So we have microformats for a bunch of different kinds of posts. Um, I briefly mentioned likes. Here's here are what my likes look like. They're not that pretty. Uh, but I haven't figured out how I want to change it. But the important part is that it's an H entry, and it has a u dash like of property, uh, so that when someone when someone parses this, they see the like of property. So then, when Ben's site receives this web engine. Um, says Aaron liked this post. Um, so we have likes, we have uh, reposts, which are done with uh, repost of. So that should be somewhere around here. There it is. So you dash repost of. Uh, this is actually another example of a nested property. This is a nested H site. Um, site is when you're citing an external uh, document. And if you look at this, here's the repost of, and instead of it being a URL, it's actually an H site, which has its own author and its own URL. And that's the URL I'm reposting. Um, repost, there's, uh, so if we go to H entry, this is the, this is the spec. And, uh, it's considered uh, stable but living, so it, 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 this page will evolve over time as usage of new terms is adopted. But these are the core properties, which are things that are published by pretty much everybody who's publishing H entry agrees that an H entry should have these properties. Um, and then here are some draft properties, which are things that are useful, and some people are doing them, and there's some uh, interop between site producing and consuming, but haven't had the sort of decision made to consider it core. Um, although I have a feeling that at this point, photo can probably graduate to core because there's not really any other way of doing that. Uh, some proposed additions, that's where we start to see the like, the re um, or the bookmark of, featured, to have an article have a featured photo, since that's a pattern that's been emerging. Um, and uh, location check-ins fall under here that we haven't. That's pretty new, so it's not hasn't made it onto the microformats wiki yet. Uh, so if we go look at H card, we'll see a similar thing where H cards have a um, set of core properties, and most of these things are com come from the V card vocabulary, uh, and. Uh, let's see, we also have H review. So if you want to mark up your review, then uh, here's the properties you can use. So that's sort of how, um, how these uh, vocabularies are, are described. And then on the IndieWeb Wiki, we also have um, uh, Indie web usage of microformats, and this is a this is not a spec. This is just more about about the format and um, some examples. So, as well as how to consume. So, how to consume H entry. I was mentioning this. Here's how to find the author. Um, it's, uh, for example, how does it work when you have something like um, aggregated page, like uh, all my blog posts from one category? Normally. Uh, in most CMS systems, they just have a preview and then it's read-on. Oh, yeah. Uh, how would you realize that with an H entry? 
because you don't have the full content and so it lives on an other URL. Yeah, so my site is actually not a good example of this. Um, let's see, who's, well, let's look at the wiki and find an example. So hfeed is the, the object used to describe, this is a list of things. So you would start there, first of all. Um, and so I was showing you a permalink. I was showing you, here's the URL of one of my posts, which is an h entry. But if you have a URL that's a list of blog posts, the top level object should be an h feed, saying, hey, here's a list of things. Um, let's check, let's see, I think his, I think he uses, um, yeah. So here's blog posts, but there's, the text is not in this list. So if we look at this list in the parser, uh, top level object is an h feed, okay, it has an author. Um, and then it has children. And these are each of the entries in the, in the list. So here's all the, the children. The children are age entries. So now I know that, all right, this page is a feed. It has a bunch of blog posts. Here's the URL of the blog post. So if I wanted to find the text of the blog post, I would just go visit that URL and parse the blog post. Just a short announcement. Lunch will be ready in about five minutes. And uh, I asked the vegan or vegetarian people to come. First, each of you who ordered a vegetarian meal, please. About five minutes. Great. Um, so, yeah. So, the, so the if you're consuming this page, you would first of all you would know it's a feed because there's a it says H feed and there's a bunch of entries. Uh, so you would assume that if there is no content property here, that you would have to go fetch that URL to find the content. Um, now. My, my articles page does show the full contents of the articles. So this actually looks very different in the, in the parse version. It, because uh, you'll, you'll see, uh, first of all, I don't have H feed. I haven't got around to adding that yet. Uh, but there's a bunch of H entries. So there's, you know, they keep going and going. Uh, and in the H entry, there is a content property. So a consumer looking at this, wouldn't have to go fetch the URL because it could it would assume that oh I see content so I can just show that. Um, um, what are the most interesting use cases for this? I mean, like Google might use it. Um, oh, so yeah, use cases. Um, most of the use cases that uh, that's driving the new vocabularies and the development of this is uh, is around web mention and getting one side to talk to another. So I showed briefly that. Uh, this, for example, this post is liked by uh, two people. Well, where did that come from? And that's actually not the best example because that's uh, from Foursquare, but the, uh, this one. Uh, so Ryan liked the post. So if I go look at Ryan's blog, this is where that like came from. He actually posted on his website and told me, hey, I posted this thing, I linked to you. And, I, and then my website says, all right, what does that mean? Well, I go look at it and I find out that it's a like, and I can show that as a star. So if we look at what else um, Ryan has done, he, he also writes blog posts, right? And if I wanted to follow him, his blog posts, I could put this URL into software that understands how to consume H feeds and read it like a reader. Um, but so yeah, you'll see uh, so likes, we also have uh, comments. Um, I post apparently way more check-ins than anything else on my site, so it's hard to find actual things now. Um, here we go. So these comments came from elsewhere. Um, and that's, they show up here because those pages have my formats on them. So I didn't have to write code to interact with a Twitter API or to interact with uh, anybody else's custom APIs. I just look at the page, parse the microformats, and I can show it as a comment. And it's super powerful for doing that. Um, and these, I think, I think uh, we'll get into this in one of the later sessions, but uh, this post went out to Twitter, and then I got a reply on Twitter, which is what this one is. So if you actually click on this, it's it's Twitter. Uh, but that's because there is a page in the middle that proxies tweets to microformats. 
and that, that looks like this, uh, which doesn't look like much, but the parsed page, or actually the, uh, the x-ray version of the page, which is what I use, looks like this, which is exactly what I want it to look like. It's in reply to my post, here's the, here's the comment text, here's who posted it, um, and that uh, ends up working out great. Um, the uh, when I added check-ins, I also made check you know how when you check in on Swarm, it tells you stuff about your check-in. I made those uh, have their own URLs so that I can get web mentions from them. So this is the uh, this is the proxy page that has my formats that represents the Swarm comment on my on my check-in. So you can parse this page, find it, and you'll find the uh, where the developer tools are. Um, so here's the H entry for this. The author is the swarm icon. Uh, and then the content is this. Uh, last question. Uh, why should we use microphones? I think there are other similar standards like R. I don't know. Oh, yeah. So there's a couple of, of different approaches people have taken to adding structured data to web pages. Um, most of them started because of Google wanting to show search results snippets. Um, so a lot of the documentation you'll find is written about that use case. Um, that's only mildly interesting to me, and I care more about having comments show up on other people's websites, right? Um, so the microphone's approach is make the author change as little as possible about their site. So, uh, like, do you have microphones on your page? Just an H entry, uh, H card. Okay, let's yeah. look, do we, you have a blog post on your page though, right? Yeah. None, much. oh, okay. Um, it's my go for tomorrow. So who has a blog post on their web page that we can use as an example that does not have microformats yet? Does not have microformats? Yeah. I think the press was... Any, just, yeah, any blog post? Mine doesn't. Yeah, okay. Um, I think my homepage does. I this with Jeremy a while ago. Whatever, whatever that's so, not, yeah, that this one? Yeah, but that's not the block. Oh, I want the block. And you go down this way. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> okay, so here's a blog post. Uh, and if we look at the source, I'm going to assume we're not going to find mic formats. Oh, you already did. Oh, shit. Sorry. Do the old ones maybe not have it? Time for lunch, guys. Uh, okay, well, that's, a, that's an exercise for later then. Um, but the, the point is that Microformats tries to impose as little as possible on the authors. So you can basically take whatever you already have, add a few things to point to the content, um, whereas some of the other alternatives either make you duplicate the content again, like put the whole thing in a hidden chunk down below, uh, or is just way more mess to add to the, to the code. Um, so Microformats is trying to be really clean and unobtrusive. Uh, plus, all, most people's indie websites use it, and that's how you can play along. <laughs> that's a good point. Us, so. Yeah, great, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thank you. Code for Germany. Uh, non-profit